Hey everybody, this is Jerry. Welcome back to the Auto Layout video tutorial series. In this video, we'll recap what you've learned in the series, I'll give you a couple additional tips, and we'll look at what other video tutorial series you can watch to learn more about mastering layouts. In this series, you learned all about working with constraints in Interface Builder. We talked about priorities and how to use them to add some power to your layout. You learned about intrinsic content size and the automatic constraints that get added for you when a view knows about the size of its content. Then we talked about working with constraints in code, creating NS Layout constraints directly and using the new UI Layout Guide and NS Layout Anchor to make things simpler and more readable. You learned how to use the visual format language to make it easier to create a large number of constraints at once. Then you learned tools for debugging your layout and understanding what's going on under the hood. Finally, you learned about animating layout changes and how simple that is. Just a couple of tips I'd like to leave you with before we wrap this series up. First, when I get a new design and I'm starting to implement it, the first thing I do is try to decompose it into groups. I try to avoid creating constraints with explicit widths or heights. I look for the most likely things to change, then I create constraints to group those views together so that if those changes happen, it has the minimum impact on my layout. Of course, with UI Stack View, you can use it to group views together and make those changes easier to handle as well. After creating all the constraints, I use the Preview Assistant Editor to see how it looks on different screen sizes and orientations. Next, when dealing with a layout inside a scroll view, the main thing to remember is that any constraint made between a subview of the scroll view and the scroll view itself are not going to behave the same way they would with a normal superview. In this case, the constraints are going to define the content size of the scroll view. For more on dealing with scroll views, check out the video tutorial series on scroll views. Finally, if you have a custom view, and maybe it has a badge or something that you want to overlap the edge of the rest of the view, you can define a custom alignment rect for your view using alignment rect for frame. Auto layout will use this rect to align with other views rather than the actual frame of the view. Auto layout is great for dealing with all the different screen sizes and orientations we have to handle. But sometimes, no matter what constraints you define, you just can't get your interface to look right in both portrait and landscape or on both an iPhone 4S and an iPad. Adaptive Layout builds on top of Auto Layout and provides a mechanism for solving these challenging situations. For more, be sure to check out the Adaptive Layout video tutorial series. And UI Stack View promises to make building even complex layouts much simpler and also reacting to hiding and showing views much simpler as well. You'll want to check out that series to learn more. Well, that's it for this video tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.